Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 version 20 H2. This is the second and last major feature update for Windows 10 in 2020 and is packing a number of notable changes and enhancements over the previous version of Windows 10 released earlier this year, known as version 2004 or the May 2020 update. So this is a sort of continuation of that update from earlier this year. So with all of that out the way, let's dive into what's new in 20H2. Uh, and let's begin with the start menu as I think that's where the most notable changes are. Uh, Microsoft has given the start menu a minor facelift with version 20H2. As you can see, it still looks like the start menu, it still functions the same. But if you look closely, you'll notice that there's a couple of differences with how it's colored. If you take a closer look at the tile interface here, you'll notice that the tiles are no longer different colors. They're all one uniform color, in this case, white. Uh, and that's because uh, we're using the light theme of Windows 10. So the tiles on Windows 10 version 20H2 are now theme aware. They now just copy your system theme, which I think looks much cleaner. In addition to that, the tile interface is also slightly translucent as well. So if we open up a window here, let's open up, say, the Microsoft Store and open the start menu again, you'll see that the contents of the Microsoft Store in the background here are blurring through the tiles ever so slightly, something you probably won't even notice unless someone points it out to you. But that is a small change they've made to the tile interface, uh, and it looks really quite nice. In addition to that, in the apps list here, you'll see that the sort of square boxes around app icons are gone as well. This is just, again, to improve the UI of the start menu. It now looks a lot more clean and minimalist, and that's what Microsoft is really going for with Windows 10 20H2. So all of the app icons here, you, you'll see no longer have an app box around them uh, just the standard icon itself and I think they look quite nice now as I mentioned the tile interface here is theme aware so if I jump into settings here and change my system theme to dark mode for example so if we come down here and change our system theme to dark mode and reopen the start menu, you'll notice that the tile interface is now using a dark theme as well, uh, which I think actually does a better job of showing off the translucent effects in the tiles. Again, it's a very subtle design choice, but it's definitely there. Uh, so this also, so the theme aware tiles also applies if you're using a color in your system theme. So if we go to custom here and scroll down, we can enable show accent color in start taskbar and action center which will make our taskbar and start menu blue but it'll also make our tile interface slightly blue as well which is really nice so that's everything new with the start menu again nothing huge here but all of these minor changes really make for a nice looking start menu in this release a much better looking start menu than the previous one which when you go back to it now kind of looks a bit noisy and messy because of all the different colors and stuff um, this is just a much more minimalist and clean interface on Windows 10 version 20H2, and I really do like it. So in addition to these start menu changes, Microsoft has also updated the notifications UI on Windows 10 version 20H2. This is what it looks like. It's not a massive update by any means, but a few things have just been moved around here and there. You'll see that there's now an app icon for the app that's popping the notification. And, uh, you know, again, things have just been moved around ever so slightly. The arrow has been replaced with an X, although its behavior is still the same. I don't know why they changed that, but they did. The X dismisses it and just moves it into the action center. And you can still find it there just like that. Again, a very minor change, but something worth noting in this update. Also new with version 20H2 is the fact that the new Microsoft Edge is now pre-installed. Previously, users had to either manually download the new Microsoft Edge or wait for it to arrive via an update through Windows Update. Now, if you haven't got the new Microsoft Edge yet and you update to version 20H2, the new Microsoft Edge will be pre-installed, uh, just like the old Microsoft Edge was. It's not something you can uninstall because it's the default Windows 10 browser, just like how the old Microsoft Edge wasn't uninstallable, or just like how Safari on iOS isn't uninstallable as well. Um, it's the same case here. This is the default system browser, uh, and it's now and it's now pre-installed on Windows 10 version 20H2. And what's significant about that is that with this release, it's sort of more integrated with the system ever so slightly. So if we open up, say, Windows Central, and another website, bing.com, and maybe one more website. Let's open microsoft.com as well. Uh, we have those three tabs open. If you're a huge alt tab user, you'll see that uh, web pages now show up in the alt tab interface in addition to apps as well. So if I press alt and tab here, you'll see that I have my three actual apps. Um, as well as the actual web pages inside my Microsoft Edge browsing session. So I have Microsoft website, Bing, and the Windows Central website, in addition to the Microsoft Store, File Explorer, and Mail app. Uh, you can configure this if we jump into settings here uh, by going into here, going into system, scrolling down to multitasking, and then scrolling down to Alt plus tab. We can change this interface here. So if you don't want to see web pages as their own thing in Alt tab, you can uh, just say open windows only. 
or you can show all tabs in Microsoft there. So if you have, say, 100 tabs open in Edge, you can actually have them all show up in Alt Tab if you want to, or you can just set it to the five most recent, which is what it's set to by default. So if you're a huge Alt Tab user and wished that your web pages would show up in uh, Alt Tab, they now do so with version 20 H2. Since we're in settings, we might as well show off some of the additions to the settings app. If we go up to display here and scroll down to advanced display settings, you'll see that you can now change your display's refresh rate straight through the modding settings app. This is only useful if you're using a PC with a display that has different refresh rates. As you can see on my PC, this is just 60 hertz and that's it. But if you're on a gaming monitor, for example, you might want to go from 60 to 120 to 240 or something like that. You can now do that straight through the modern settings app if that's what you want. And finally, if we scroll down to the about area here, you'll see that there's now a copy dialogue for the device specifications and Windows specifications. So if I press on copy here uh, and it opens, say, something like Notepad, I can paste all of that in there like that. And this is only useful, really, if you're trying to send somebody your PC information or trying to get help through support. You can now send everything all at once, and that's kind of nice. Now, last but not least, Microsoft is updating the behavior of tablet mode on Windows 10 version 20H2. No longer will Windows ask you whether you want to enter tablet mode when you detach or flip around a convertible PC. Windows will instead just sort of enhance the desktop experience so that it's easier to use with touch. So if we open up, say, File Explorer here, uh, you'll see a number of things change now when I move from sort of laptop mode that I'm in currently to tablet mode. So as you can see there, a few things have changed. The hitboxes in the File Explorer app here are now bigger. Um, the search bar on the taskbar has minimized. App icons on the taskbar are now better spaced. And uh, the touch keyboard icon is now available in the system tray. App windows still operate in app windows and the start menu still opens the start menu. Uh, the, bit, the full screen start experience isn't here. You can still enable that in settings if you want to. And you can, of course, go back into the action center and enable tablet mode if you want. Uh, but by default, tablet mode will no longer come on when you enter tablet mode uh, because Microsoft is now improving the desktop experience with touch instead. Now, this is something you can change. If you go into system here, Go down to tablet, you'll see this option here, and you can re-enable the ask me before switching modes feature, uh, but by default it's now set to do not switch to tablet mode, as Microsoft thinks that the desktop experience with its enhanced touch features is better than the old tablet mode experience that's built into Windows 10. Again, it's still accessible if we swipe in from the right here and press on tablet mode. We can go back to that old tile interface which has full screen apps and stuff, but that is just no longer the default on this version of Windows 10. And in fact, if you're using a PC without a touchscreen now, the tablet mode option here would just be gone. It, will no longer, it won't even show up anymore, which I think actually makes sense. Uh, but yes, that's the other final change worthy of note in this release. So there you have it. That's a quick look at Windows 10 version 20H2. Not a huge update by any means, but this is the last major feature update for Windows 10 in 2020. And I think the collection of minor changes in this update makes for an overall nice release. So thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.